This is Boxing Tickets NA. Um, we're here with Paddy the Patman Gallagher. Paddy, how's things? Sweet, the ring's going good, thanks. Happy days. Ish. So, so Paddy, been out of the ring for six months now. Um, uh, seven, maybe. Seven months, so uh, August, I had to feel it was your last show. Yeah. Um, I guess you've obviously had a bit of reflection back on, you know, the dreadful decision. I was cat. It's um, sort of over, but it still annoys me. Do you know what I mean? It's like, ah, oh, shit, it's done now. It didn't annoy me a lot at the time, but looking back sometimes, it's like, oh. and then when you see things happen and you see other, like, very close things, you're like, I don't see a right, dodgy decision or someone getting a fly one or whatever, and you're like, fuck me. You know what I mean? It brings it back to me as well, sticking away as well. So, it is a bit kept, but it's a shit one as well. I've got over it, do you know what I mean? Like, like most things. So, um, it's, it's in the past, and then see what happens in the future, see if something, something better comes. A lot of people say, oh, your luck's going to change now. We've been saying that for fucking years, so we're still waiting on to happen. Is it? I think, what, uh, about seven and a half years now as a pro. Uh, uh, made your debut at the SSE Arena, mm -hmm. uh, September 2012. Can you remember much about that? Uh, I was one of the hardest fights to do. <laughs> it was uh, William Warburn, my first fight. Absolutely, he's retired over a week, so happy retirement to be here with us. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think he fought him twice. I think he fought him later on, a couple of years later. Yeah, I fought him twice. Um, and the second one was actually harder. I think I, I drew a round and I lost a round out of the six, but when I won, I won the first four in the debut. But I was hard enough. It was, it was in the Odyssey on the Steve Molitor versus the Fratton versus Molitor fight. Um, it was a good debut, and all. It was a big, big occasion to be making your debut. Um, felt good. It was, it was a good name. It was a good win, though, as well. I just remember, I was told a few places for a few people. It was John Loy, he was doing referee, but he was only a trainee referee at the time. And at the end of the fight, or someone, Paul McCulloch was the referee, he says, remember, if if you have to fight, you go over. And you say to the ref, look, I won that sort of, and he, he, he may be inclined to give you or whatever. But um, I went over to John Loy, and he walked away. I was like, oh shit, I've lost this. I was like, oh fuck, but he was a trainee referee at the time, so he wasn't allowed to score it. So um, I wasn't allowed to put a hand up, I was like, oh, thank fuck for that. <laughs> what have been a disaster of a debut. But nothing worse than your debut in a big, big arena. Uh, um, getting beat obviously by a Obviously getting beat and it always been a trainee referee. Uh, no. um, so looking back, obviously the last couple of years, um, probably highlights, lowlights, you know, probably what? Three three losses. Um, obviously had a, probably a career best achievement out in America. Mm. Um, obviously decision didn't go your way. Uh, um, but probably looking back in reflection, you're probably thinking, you know what, the competition didn't go any further, so mm. probably better to lose. And I, I was actually looking at three meals. I was looking for something the other week. It was flights from years ago. I was looking for something, and I came across that, and then came across one of the emails, and I clicked on it, and I just started going through. You know the, the trail thread or the trail, or whatever it's called. I was going through out of how it goes, and I was like, fuck me, that was unbelievable. No, just just a buzz. Not coming. I think it was up until. Four weeks before that, I was on, I was on the, the little box off to try and be in like a reserve. Yeah. And then I got the first place, the next one, and then it was a week or a week and a half or two weeks before it. it says right, you may be in because someone may pull out. You may be in the main tournament. I, was like, I just remember, it just brought me back to it. And um, the end of me finally getting in as well, and then going over, and it was unbelievable. That was definitely the highlight of my career, personally anyway. Um, that's been the highlight. So it has. I've had a couple of few nights and a couple of disaster nights. Since then, but it's definitely been a highlight. The whole occasion leading up to it and getting into it and being over in America and I was over with Jar and Down, had an unbelievable we were for six days or a week. And um it was brilliant so it was apart from the result of course, but I didn't take it all that bad. It was a good experience to give a good performance though and I really enjoyed myself. So that's definitely a highlight of my career. The the low light or the, the low darkness you could probably say. Um I don't know, maybe I don't know, I've had a lot of shit stuff. I mean, so I can't pick out Probably. And it's been a bit of a disaster. My career as a whole has been absolutely shit. To be honest. Well, not absolutely shit. As a whole, yes, it has been a bit of a disaster in a way. I've had good times now as well. But to round it all up, uh, well being the negative, definitely. I'd say probably your worst venue, probably be your call. Fuck I think, that. I, think, uh, call, uh, I think what. I think you've appeared there four times, obviously three in the one night in Price Fighter. Uh, and then obviously the recently the Q fight. The Q fight, uh, someone was texting me all week. Or last week when the boys were fighting over in a gun contract, someone says, Oh, you are called, man, but you fighting there. I says, If I had a chance, I'm going to burn it to the fucking ground. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess burned it wasn't me, it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I, but I think you've been a bit critical of yourself, you know. Um, I guess 
pro box and doesn't isn't all rose you know doesn't all smell of roses you know you, you come through good times bad times um i think what people say sometimes is is through the feet sometimes you can learn you know i think i think carl frampton said recently that um he's learned more from defeats than he has from ones i get yes could be you know he could, could learn your foot and what not to do you know, and um i don't know not necessarily people people do say you can move lose you, you learn more from the feet by the win that learn something you know what i mean you may get a tight or you make win against a hard opponent you still get the win and you go i learned a lot now he was a lot more experienced than i was with it. so not necessarily you could say that you could sugar, sugar coat a defeat by saying you lose, you learn more for it or try and make, take a positive of it but no i don't i don't believe that so um you're you've obviously been out of the ring just under seven months now mm -hmm. um you're obviously uh awaiting news uh of your return to the ring um have you anything in mind of, of obviously what you only have? I've got offered a couple of fights. I've, I've offered out fights for I don't know how many, and um, they've come back as no, or else just haven't re replied. Good fights, hard fights, no as well. I've got offered a couple of says yeah, and one or two that have said no to, or one that has said no to actually recently. It was a uh, final come off the eliminator. <laughs> but it was just just didn't work out ten ways because I'm going on holiday in a few weeks. Going skiing, aren't you? Ah, uh, going going skiing. It, it was too soon to it as well, and um, hope I have on two working legs by the time I come back from the skiing. <laughs> I could be a, I could be a bit of a problem, but no, that didn't suit as well. So I'm waiting on, and uh, to be honest, I'm waiting on uh, for the two fight again. I'm whether it will hundred percent fight again. I'm not too sure. And I don't mean that in a, a negative way or a wee pair me way, but. Uh, if I definitely fight again, I'm not too sure. Good chance I will, but it's not 100%. So I hope with MTK we, we, can, we can get something as well. I'm not saying as if I'll only fight if there's loads of, loads of money, because that's not how boxing works. As I said, if, if it works out right and I'm in the main, right, main frame and all to fight, then yes, I will. Good chance I will, but not 100%. So obviously, um, you know, off the back end of obviously uh, the, the failure, um, obviously your long term coach Jared um, yeah. retired from the ring um, I guess obviously in one way um, Dan stayed within the stable and D Walsh was yeah. obviously coming into things uh, D Walsh funny actually fought in the, the same card you made your debut yeah. on so you've obviously known D quite a bit I've known um, D since we're about 13 I think, so uh, years. I think from speaking to Owen O'Neill and Lewis Crocker they've obviously both said they've, they've obviously learned new, new things from D yeah. Is it sort of something you would be looking forward to, you know, if you do decide to step back into the ring? Well, because I work during the day, don't suit there in the day. I'm sure we'll be able to do it during the days, but I have been doing a bit of training with Dan, and it's been going well. It's going very well. Dan's he's very forward thinking now as well, and he, he's open because he's only learning, he's, he's not ignorant. If I say something, he's like, right, okay, and then he takes it, and we'll do it now as well. So I have been doing a wee bit with him recently, and it's been good. Um, We'll, we'll see see how things go and see how things take us over the next week. Like I said, if, if I definitely fit again, if I definitely fit again, good chance he'd be in my corner. Fantastic. Um, so so obviously the last year in, in Belfast obviously been booming. Um, well, there's been five, six MTK shows in the last year. Yeah. Um, it's always already been one in February. Um, you know, what what do you think MTK has brought to boxing, you know, particularly in Northern Ireland? Um, well, that's, so I mean, like... Um, you think of three to four years ago, there was Cyclone with only people here. Mark Dunlop, I was it, you know, Mark Dunlop and Ali were doing smaller shows, but Cyclone was the only show here. But that's not like that now, you know, I mean, we've had the fail, we've had uh, loads of Oxford Hall shows, we've had some Titanic shows, and then um, obviously they were involved with Fram over in Windsor. So, you know, what I mean, they, they brought a lot to boxing, they brought boxing alive rather than just one big, one big lad, Cyclone, doing all the work. And, They've brought a lot more here, they've given a lot more people opportunities, they're getting, they're making boxing massive again, do you know what I mean? People love it, it's, it's people are coming household names through boxing, rather than one or two, like a lot of people, you go out and say, do you know this one, do you know that one, do you know Rose Crocker, do you know Sean McComb, do you know Paddy Gallagher, do you know um, Sean Duffy, all the rest of it, do you know what I mean? Rather than just, you know, Frampton and things, you know them two two or three fellas on the news all the time, no, you know everyone else as well, so it's bringing a lot of exposure to the boxers on their way up, or people that aren't at that top level. So that way it's very, very good. It's given a lot of more people an opportunity to fight that, that they wouldn't have had a few years ago. Do you know what I mean? You had the, you had the bag to get on the show a few years ago, but now 
you go and you play a card right and you do things good, good chance to be fighting on uh, I guess it's obviously very important, but obviously Frampton coming to end his career, we obviously need somebody to take over from that. So I guess obviously they're building the base as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, for the future. Exactly. There's a few people, a few boys I named there, are definitely going to be the future of Irish boxing. So that's with it. James Tennyson, so I have to forget that because he's one or two fights off a world championship, I imagine. Do you know what I mean? And um, if he could bring Matthew him here as well, he's saying we're missing, he brings Matthew him. Fuck, you go again. We're all spoiled rat normal. We've got yeah. top rank, a bit of Frank Warren, a bit of MTK, a bit of um, Does he match him? Match him, yeah. You know what I mean? We have them all. Fuck's sake. Laughing. All in Belfast, small city. So, um, I guess we're obviously just waiting for news uh, dropping, but it appears um, that Callum Smith's going to be fighting Canelo on the 2nd of May. Is that right? Um, so, uh, I think from you know, from whatever thing that's, that's been going on, um, Josh Taylor's linked to Ben Davison and fighting the 2nd of May in Glasgow. So. I guess Ben can't be in two places at once, so I think everybody's making the assumption now that Smith's got the fight. Oh, um, l- looking back, and obviously your fight with Callum Smith for the uh, Commonwealth Gold, um, does it sort of make you, in a hindsight, go, that could be me fighting Canelo? No, not really. I'm just saying that, I was like, fuck, what the muscle he's getting? I tax him here, look, look, some sparring, Callum. I'm <laughs> happy. Get the door, big fella. Um, I can go for and clip my boot again. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not really, because it was a completely different past, different lifestyles, different ways, you know what I mean? I beat him, I had one fight, and I beat him, that was it, you know what I mean? That's not really, because he done it, necessarily mean I would have done it. Or that I had the capabilities done it, because I probably would have, but I haven't, so. No, no, you can't really say it's because he done it, I, I want to do it, I beat him, so I'll beat all the rest of them. Rocky Field and George Groves and all, where all I start clipping them a bit, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't work like that, so it was, um, Someone said to me the other day, he says, Oh, Calm Smith's here, claim the fame, claim the fame. I, but honestly, it's something you crack. Oh, I hate people saying that. You're Calm Smith. I'm like, Fuck, I'm about Calm Smith. I've been him years ago. But um, even before that, even longer. I, no, I claim the fame, but the best win would probably be at the time of who it beat, would probably be Ray Morlet, because he's come back off. He was amateur world champion. He was just off the back of him, and I beat, a fr- I beat him a couple months later, you know what I mean? Or uh, my year later, or something like that. I beat him fresh off being world champion. but. I'd be calm first, he wasn't champion until after. So, I have a couple of good ones as well. Um, but, not necessarily, if he does get that fight, I gotta be good, I'd be a good, good fight. It's hard to look past Canelo, because he's just mowing everyone down. I mean, Floyd Mayweather, but even if you want him again, you destroy Mayweather. He's come on, leaves some bounds, he's getting bigger, he's stronger, and I don't know how he's doing it, or he's beating the meat in them, or beating something into him. <laughs> but, um, He's doing, he's, he's doing everything right and he, he's hard to look past, do you know what I mean, he's to Glavkin and Jacobs and then obviously moving up the, the big man, what do you call him, the Crusher, Kovlev and all as well, he's an absolute beast, so I think I gotta be a good fit, it's hard to look past Smith as well, do you know what I mean, he's had one or two, he, like seven first round knockouts in a row or something like that early in his career, and he stepped up and he's brilliant, and I think he had one or two rocky fights where he wasn't brilliant, but now he's, he's flying again, he's, he's Crushing everyone, he's doing unbelievable. So it's a good fight. It's a very good fight if that does happen. So, so looking over your career, uh, twenty-two fights. Mm. Um, just a bit of a trivial question for you: How many of them do you think you've had in Belfast? Oh shit! Um, twenty-two fights, probably about, about ten. So you've had twelve fights in Belfast and ten fights away. So you're nearly like a, a jack of all trades. You go anywhere, you fight. Uh, um, that's, that's that's the thing as well. Like it, I did McKinson, Michael McKinson, I got offered to fight him. Like with our sorry, I'll, I'll go back and I'll talk about that. But we were a guy who always fought away and always I was like, if it's fucking melting, I wanna fight back home. I got offered a McKinson fight off the back of the queue and I was like, no, I I, I fought queue and then I beat Name Wells. And I got offered McKinson, I was like, no, I, I wanna I fight him no problem, but I wanna fight home because I'm always going away, going away, everybody's got their fights here and I'm going away. I said I wanna fight home. Jimmy Jimmy Connor's like, don't sweat, that's okay. And then they got me the the what do you call them? Jenkins, right? <laughs> Jenkins fit, and um, I got home Belfast and then fucking look what happened. So I go fuck, I ain't gonna fight anywhere else now. I mean, it, amazing, it is amazing fighting in Belfast. People will tell you your home, your home city and all, you're not far away, and all the people supporting you, and it's brilliant in the atmosphere. And you got the people behind you and stuff. But going away, I love, I do love. Obviously, I've done it ten times. I love going away and fighting as well because. You get a wee weekend away or a few days away, it's great to see a different city or 
Jeg har ikke sett noe ut her, de har tråden bøyt under skulderen, stev og veien, for å dø med hjernen nå. Du vet hva jeg mener? Jeg har aldri bøyt under every day life. Jeg er sku ut, get away, fate, you go home, you go out. You go away, you sit in a hotel, you weigh in, you go to press conference, all the rest of it, and then you go after a fight, get a few pints in you, you get paid, and then you go, you go home the next day, and everybody's handy dandy, you go home to the next clean house, she's waiting around with the kids and all. So yeah, it's good like that. But, um, I actually thought, I thought maybe more I fought away. I know I felt that much here, and I had one big fight here. Oh, I was only big fight, all my big fights have been away, so that's probably why I've been more inclined to thinking that I was away. But, um, in the future, so I, I take any fight. Like I said, I got offered a few. I'll tell you a few names now. You'll be well, happy. To, that was a good fight to be taken now. But it didn't happen. I've offered a few now as well. And no, I'll come back and we'll give you make, make a proper offer now. Nothing's materialized it. But out of the 22 fights, I've had six losses. Like you said the other day, and uh, Karen, big Karen trainer from boxing, boxing shut it. Um, he he said as well as like your career, your. Your record is not a true reflection of you as a fighter and all as well. I've had a couple of, I've had, I've took a few risky fights, not risky in a way, yes. I took a few fights away and ones that were risky, say. And then um I've had a few dirty jokes. The last three three fights are very, very, very controversial. The last three defeats are yeah. controversial. So if they hadn't had no went fucking um, wankerish, I'd have been sitting here at nineteen and three. And then more three apart. Out of the six fights, the only fight I ever lost clear as day was Johnny Coyle in the prize fighter final. Oh, yeah. Chang, there was not much in it. There was a point in it. You know, I knocked him down once, he knocked me down twice. Controversial knockdown is not going to do um, Johnny Coyle beat me clear. He beat me three rounds, had me down twice or three times, whatever. And then um, Tamuka, not much in it. Um, Solomon, Rob, Kid, very controversial. Two knockdowns, there were knockdowns, near them. The very, very worst could have said one of them. Even if he said one of them, I'd have won the fight. Fuck shit. And then Jenkins was the clearest day. Do you know what I mean? So, the so, saying you sort of look back on that, you sort of go and you know where you where you were sort of saying earlier, you know, you know what sort of career we have, and you sort of look back on that. I think I spoke to Dan the other day, and we're, we we're obviously talking, you know, the, the Brad Solomon fight, you know, the, the record that he had and where he was at the time mm. could have really boosted you up, and then you'd obviously the Kuwait fight. Which yeah. obviously could have been you up at the same time, and then the Jenkins fight could have done the same. So very close, you know. It sort of shows the fine lines of boxing. Ah, uh, definitely. Um, well, there were one point in the Kuwait fight. If one judge had to give me up one more, something like that, or if one of them knocked down, had I won all three judges? It was a draw. He won by one, then he won by three. But whatever way it worked, there, I can't remember what way exactly. But if one of them won, one of them slips for a knockdown, I'd have won all three judges. So it's, it's how close, how fine line that was. Um, Solomon, I think he beat me by a point on one of the judges and two on the other, and I won one. And there was five judges there, I think he won three two, but there was a point or something like that. And then the Jenkins, fuck sick. People say, oh, they joke, oh, you have to get knocked out to get a draw. I got knocked out, it's like a fucking bait. Do you know what I mean? Bait. Um, so that's just a bit shit and we're on the boat here with sour grapes, like, but it's just the way it is. And outside, all the things happened as well. And a few are. Disasters happen over things, and it's a bit, it's a bit shit. And here, and here, crying about it. Here, not crying. Here, talking about it. You're getting out of me. I'm trying to be fucking positive. And here you are, laughing. But um, ah, uh, here, talking about it. And they're like, fuck, maybe you shut up, get over yourself. Do it as well. This is good. Tell me, fuck, get over yourself. Stop crying over it. And um, it is a bit shit and all as well. But I'll be alright. If I fail again, things will be. I'll be a lot more positive about things. Hopefully, I get. Not what I deserve or what I earn. Hopefully, I get a bit of fucking luck. I was never believing luck when I start to because the fucking must happen to some people. Um, hopefully, the rest of my career, if it does happen, hopefully for the rest of my career is a lot more positive and it outweighs the good, outweighs the bad by the time I get there. I would like to leave with another couple of wins, one or two titles, but that's a pretty uh, fucking pretty state. I don't want that anymore. Poison Charles grip. And um, the Commonwealth title would be nice to get the Commonwealth title in the early international or the continental or. And interim titles, you know, one of them ones, it would be good to get on one of the ranking bodies, get a couple of titles that way. So, um, I'll, I'll see how the, how the rest of my life, how the rest of the next few years go. See, like I said, hopefully, MTK may be announcing one soon, I imagine. Um, they're go, they were saying, or I've heard that they're going to do one this half of the year, so, and then obviously, if the fail happens, and then if Fratton happens, so that's all hearsay, so. 
If um, there'd be a couple of shows here and then maybe a couple of shows away, that one that I got offered from the Commonwealth Limiter, I said to Jamie, look, it is too soon. After this, it's only three weeks after this holiday. I said, look, if you get me in May or June, not a problem. That's a perfect fit. Who it was and what way it was, knows well if I get that. And then whether it's Giant TV, Kate's the fifth titler, I get the better him for revenge. And um, for the Commonwealth title, that would be good. So ho hopefully that can't happen May or June, then I'll be laughing. I think uh, around June time as well, you sort of made a fight online with Luther Clay. Who's obviously beat Freddie Cute as well. So uh, I guess with Cute running away from the rematch, yeah. um, obviously beating Clay is beat them. You know the man that beat you, mm. you beat the man that beat him. So uh, you know the possibility of fighting Clay probably, and you know I think he's linked the match room in some way. So uh, obviously you've always done well in match room shows. I think the, the last match room show I think you had four knockdowns. Uh, oh, was that the Burnett Burnett card in June, uh, twenty seventeen? So yeah, nice. you've, you've always done well on her and shows. I, I think I remember the press conference for that show, you were standing in the crowd to watch, and then you were told, uh, uh, Paddy, you're on this card. Oh, wow. You know? Fuck you, Tom Maverick. I spacked it, I was like, we got a fair fuss. I think everybody Next was thing. in suits, weren't they? Sank oh, Tennyson and, and Hilo and, and stuff were in suits. Yeah, they were tracksuits, smacked it. West End. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a good one too. No, I forgot all about that fight. You know, I mean, I've been trying to make fights. It's not beggars can't be choosers, and um, like, like I'm not desperate for a fight. You know, I mean, I want a fight. I want a fight, and I fucking throw myself out there and hurt myself out for a fight. But uh, as you know, what I'll fight anyone. You know, what I mean, like I said, I, I knocked back the McKenzie fight because I wanted to fight here and I wanted it my way. But I got that, and the fucking look what happened. So I fight anybody. Um, not any time because I got offered one that said no, so it'll be very hypocritical. But I will fight anyone, considering the circumstances are good, no problem. I mean, you're not far away from a fight. A few other fights that accepted unofficially, you'd go fuck. You would fight anyone, you mad bastard. But um, we'll see what happens from here. If Clay does, they said yes, no problem. And Jamie knows his manager, Al Siesta. And I think it's, it's unofficially, or they say, look, Fight. We're happy with that fight. Me and Jamie are happy for it. My, my team will say we're happy for that fight. His team said they're happy for it. Whether it happens or not, I don't know. Hopefully, he does stick to his, his word, let's say. And um, I would love it. I feel he's got a nice tight learner as well. But if he beats, if he beats Chris Congo, it's a fucking smash and win. And he beat Cure, then he beat that Italian guy as well. So he's coming back at three wins. I get a win here, hopefully, soon enough, and then straight back in to fight him. Do a job on him, get myself a title once and for all. I think you can sort of look at the Tommy McCarthy model. You know, Tommy McCarthy was always the, the nearly sort of man, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's sort of come along and then obviously got his lucky break the same way with Matchroom. Mm -hmm. Um and obviously now, you know you know, look where he's at now, he's WBC International. How yeah. man Tro McKenna are obviously both hold yeah, some of yeah. their titles. You know, you look at Anthony Kokachi, British champion Tennyson about the his favourite British title. So I guess in one way you can sort of look at that and go, I'm only really one one away from uh, from putting another belt in the well, around your waist nearly, you know. I exactly. I said to him, if I get, come back get a, a six round or whatever here, get a, a routine win, and then I can fight for almost any titles, you know what I mean? Obviously, because it'll be within the year, and I imagine it'll be decently right. Get one win, and then if I get the opportunity to fight for a good title, bang me up a bit again as well. I'm not far away from the top ten. I've always been, I've been in for the last four years, I'm pretty sure I anyway. I get myself an Irish license though, because <laughs> mine's not making myself an Irish license. You, then I can still fight for the combat Did title. you forget your BGA title then? No, no, no. I, I got asked would I and I said I would. I didn't say yes to forget, I said I would. And then um, all of a sudden the, the sanctions someone to fight for it. So I don't know if it's struggled or asked. They said, ah, you said it. Nothing on record though. Cut that. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I don't know. I, I was fucking... Uh, oh, fuck it. If someone gets me a fight then I'll be there. No, and if something good as well. Run the bed. I'm not. I'm not a manager or a matchmaker or fucking a promoter. I'm not a fighter. I'm not a trainer. Either. I'm just a fighter. So hopefully, someone, if, if someone can make me a good fight. If we get something as well, but don't fight ever again. Fuck it. At least I tried. You know what I mean? As well, I'm sure I'll live my life happy, happy without boxing, all stresses, and all fucking heartache with it. Got a, good, got a good family. Got a good missus. Got a good kids and all that as well. I've got a good job. So. And I'm planning to look on that boxing isn't the only thing now. For years it was. It was just down, down, down for it, down for it, down for it. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I guess obviously the, the, the last last six months we've obviously had a, a few retirements from boxing. So 
coming off the back of the Jenkins fight as well, obviously it, Paddy Barnes retired, mm. Margot McCullough retired. Yeah. You know, they probably nearly you're probably now looking at the times going, Well I will I pull up him here and, uh-huh. and just retire but I guess sometimes you sorta of left with that mindset of going, I'm so close to something so you know, keep digging in. Hi, uh, that's it, exactly. If it suits me, I've said like, I'll only fight if it suits me from now on. I don't, I don't play it does, because I was, I was talking to Rachel and she, she was saying, like, why, why do you do it now? And then, because I was thinking that because of money and all, I was like, I love fighting. I just do love to fight. I love, I love boxing. It's always been my way. And maybe, maybe I would be happier away from it, because I've never had it, so I don't know what it would be like. Cause boxing does fucking make it sad. Boxing does when I fucking get in there and it's, I do get cranky and all as well, not just make them wait, but you're fucking just a fucking load of bollocks. Well, I've cut some of this fucking interview here, because I'm sorry, like a negative bastard. But that's a bad mood. So, so, is there anything else you want to add in the interview? Um, everybody, sure sport, boxing tickets, and I'm very good for boxing. They're doing the job here, um, they're helping boxers shift tickets and promote themselves and all as well. So, do support them, they are doing well. Um, keep supporting the boxers. Maybe you've seen me, on, maybe you've seen me in a fight one time. Support me. Fantastic. Entertainment as always. Fantastic, Paddy. Well, thanks very much for your interview, and obviously, all the best for the future. Yes. Cheers. Cheers.